Hello, welcome back to this week's vlog for week commencing the 1st of May. I'm David Jones and I do this every week with Trading 2 on 2. We'll take a look back at what was happening last week, what was driving markets, uh, what to look ahead to this week. And as usual, we're going to spend a bit of time talking about trading strategy. And this week, we're going to expand a little bit on what we were doing with moving averages last week. So if you missed that one, you can watch that and then we'll look at a different way of using moving averages. Now, going back to last week, it was quite a big week in the end. We saw some uh, sizable moves in stock markets and, and the likes of the euro and the pound. And this was all after the French presidential election, the first round that was held uh, on Sunday. The results from that gave markets some relief and we saw markets sharply higher when Asian trading started on, on Sunday night. And that did continue uh, for the first few days of last week, you know, strengths in the likes of the euro is a fairly obvious one, but also stock markets as well pushed higher. Now, there's plenty going on this week. I think one of the first things to look at this week will be how do markets react after the gains from last week? Do we see those gains being built on and markets pushing higher? Or do we see uh, maybe investors and traders thinking last week's moves were a bit too extreme and the market starts to cool off? Now, of course, Monday is a holiday in plenty of places around the world. So we could see, or we will see, something of a quiet start um, to markets. But there's plenty going on uh, for the rest of the week. Most of the focus is going to be on the US. But, but first of all, uh, on Wednesday morning, we've got an economic update from the Eurozone. We have a GDP number for the first quarter. So we'll see how well or how badly the European economy is doing. And then Wednesday night, 7 p.m. UK time, we've got um, a very important announcement that the Federal Reserve, the US central bank uh, announcement on interest rates. Uh, this really is a keenly watched announcement, clearly for, for stock markets and currency markets. And we'll normally see uh, a bit of a quiet few hours in the run up to that, plenty of volatility over the announcement, and it can really dictate the movements of the markets over the next few days, and maybe even the next few weeks. Then, of course, as this week is the first week of a new month. That means only one thing on Friday. It's the US non-farm payrolls. So that's the US unemployment numbers. They're announced at 1.30 UK time uh, on Friday. So that's an hour before the official open for US stock markets. The expectation is for the US economy to have added something like 180,000 jobs uh, during, during last month. And again, keenly watched number, arguably, uh, the most watched number uh, every month uh, for markets. So we should see, I think, plenty of volatility when that gets announced and often, you know, continuing uh, big moves in the afternoon when the number comes out. So that's this Friday at 1.30. I think that's, that's the big one for this week. Before we look at some markets, um, let's talk a bit more about moving averages. Now, last time around, I was talking about uh, using one moving average to generate buy and sell signals, but there are some drawbacks with that. There is a slightly different way uh, of using moving averages. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that for our strategy session this week. You remember from last time around that when we have a moving average, let's say we've got a five day moving average. If the market's falling as it is here, then the moving average will fall as well, but will be slightly above the market price. So it follows the trend lower. But if the market goes sideways, it can all get a bit messy with the moving average and the price crossing over. So there we have our downtrend, the market turns around, then the moving average turns around as well. So our signals come when we're using one moving average from the crossovers like here, and that's probably the best signal there where the trend reversed. But one of the problems is in a sideways market, the price and moving average will cross over, giving plenty of false signals. Let's say the purple line on here is a five day moving average. One way to filter out some of these weaker signals is to use two moving averages. So what we'll do now, we'll add a, a 20 day moving average onto the chart to see what that looks like. So here's our 20 day moving average that's also tracking the price, but because it's taking into account more price data, it doesn't track the price quite as closely. So it's at less danger of getting false signals from the price crossing through. So when we're using two moving averages, what we do, we actually ignore the areas where the price crosses through the moving average. Our buy and sell signals come when the two moving averages 
cross over. So in this example here, when the five day, the purple line, crosses above the green line, the 20 day moving average, that's the only buy signal that's generated on this chart. And of course, if the market fell off from up here and the five day crossed below the green, the 20 day, that would be our sell signal. So using two moving averages together will give us fewer signals, um, but hopefully it will filter out some of the messier signals like this when the price and the one moving average are close together. So that's the theory behind it. As usual, let's see how it's performed in the real world. And we'll stick with those five and 20 day moving averages. So let's take a look at a real market and some real signals. Okay, we're on the trading two on two trading platform. Um, what I've got here is a daily chart for the Euro US dollar going back to June last year. Let's add on our moving averages. We do it from up here on the indicators. It's a trend following indicator. So we'll choose a simple moving average. So first of all, let's choose a five day and we'll make that blue. We'll leave that as it is. Confirm. You can see our price, our moving average price has been added in. And let's add in a 20 day moving average. We'll keep it simple. Here we go. Make that 20 and we'll change the color to green on this one so we can see it. So there we have our two moving averages on the price. Now, if we were just using the five day on its own, it does catch the turns, the major turns, pretty well. But where it can get a bit messy, and in these sort of areas where the market is going uh, sideways, where we're buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. So the idea of adding the second moving average, what we're looking at here is just taking the signals when the two moving averages cross over. Because the price is important, of course, because it's the, the price that, that decides the value of the moving average. But it's when these two cross over. There's our sell signal. We had a buy signal down there, which reversed pretty quickly. Then a buy signal down here. You can see the five moving above the 20, giving a buy signal there. Then it stays long all the way up. Then sells here, reverses and sells short. Then a buy signal down here, a sell signal there. And the most recent signal we had was a buy signal just here on the 20th of April. So that would have been uh, the week before last. So hopefully you can see how using two moving averages together, can filter out um, some of the false signals. It may not suit everybody. You know, some people, if they're using moving averages, they want to stick to just one and have the price crossing above. But if you'd like maybe a slightly more uh, medium term and less choppy uh, trading approach using moving averages, then using two uh, could be the solution for you. So there we have it. It's a slightly different way of using moving averages. You can use two, three, four, but it's uh, to try and filter out maybe some of the, some of the choppiness we get when markets are going sideways. Now I said there's a big week uh, for the US this week. We've got that interest rate announcement on Wednesday night. We've got the unemployment numbers coming out on Friday. Last week we did see some reasonable gains for US stock markets. Um, so I think that's the market we're going to look at this week. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones index. It's had a, a great run over the last six months or so. Uh, let's see what this market looks like after last week. Here's the US stock market, the Dow Jones, um, the US 30, as it's known on the platform. So we've got this, this is a daily chart going back to September last year. We had that that's massive range on the day of the US election last November. And since then, of course, stock markets have gained an awful lot of ground. We saw fresh all time highs at the end of February for the US market. Uh, but, but during sort of um, April, the story March and April, the story has been one of a market that's, that's been drifting a little bit. We haven't seen that much in the way of progress. But looking at our, we've got the five day and the 20 day moving average. It's done pretty well in this trend, as you'd expect. We had a buy signal uh, the day after the US election. It stuck with it all the way up to here, where it got a bit messy, but then it gave a buy signal uh, again in January, 25th of January, and only sold out of that on the 20th of March. So we have seen uh, the moving averages catch big chunks of those trend. And the last signal we had was uh, just at the end uh, of last week, well, the middle of last week, where we had a buy signal off the moving averages. But we have a market that's been pretty sideways uh, over the last sort of four to six weeks. Let's take a look at the short term chart, the hourly chart. So this is uh, going back to the 17th of April. This is an hourly chart now. And you can see that the gap higher uh, last Sunday night when the Asian markets opened up on sort of a relief 
from the results of that French election. And the market did move uh, quite a bit higher in the first half of last week, but, but had a couple of boring days uh, towards the end. But of course, this week we've got the US Federal Reserve, the interest rate decision uh, on Wednesday night. And then on Friday, we've got the payroll. So we could see quite a bit more volatility. I think that the big level to watch, first of all, it's going to be the highs from last week. So just up here, I think if we can break through these highs around about the, the 21,000 and 70 mark, maybe we'll see a move out to fresh all time highs. So it's going to be a really interesting level to watch. If we do see the market sell off and sell off quite heavily, then plenty of people will be looking at these lows after that gap. So just around the 20,700 mark, if we did see the market drop, uh, heavily during the week, will we see the buyers uh, come back in? But the story for the last couple of days of last week was a market that was uh, that was drifting slightly. We're not really getting much of a clue from the RSI uh, down here. We're not really um, overbought or oversold. It's come close, but hasn't really dipped into into the extreme. So it's a market I think that after the surge that we've seen, spent a couple of days almost uh, treading water. But I think as we see. US earnings season continue this week and that interest rate decision and those non-farm payrolls, we should see plenty more volatility uh, for the Dow and for US markets. So there's a couple of big levels to watch, I think, for traders in the days ahead. If you like the video, just click the, the thumbs up at the bottom. If you subscribe, uh, you'll never miss out on one of these. We'll do this all again uh, next week, of course. And as usual, if you have any questions of stuff you'd like us to cover in the future, just leave a message in the comments. But we'll wrap things up there and I hope you have a good trading week.